Hey, what's up guys? It's Tech Infusion, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make this clean, simple intro in After Effects. It's not too hard to make, and you can also tweak it and make it your own. Let's jump right in. All right, so let's start by making our composition. And I typically just make it a 4K project, but you can use whatever works for you. First, let's create a circle by using our ellipse tool and drawing out a decent sized circle. Holding shift on your keyboard will keep the shape a true circle. Go ahead and set the fill and stroke properties. Then I'm going to align the circle to the center of my composition. Let's set the anchor point to the middle of the circle by holding down control on Windows and command on Mac and clicking on the anchor point tool in our toolbar. Then drop down the properties for your circle layer, click add and select trim paths. Drop down the properties for trim paths then I'm going to go about a second into my timeline and set a keyframe for start. Then I'm going to go about a second or two more and change my start value to 100%. Then I'm going to go about four to five keyframes ahead of my first start keyframe and set a keyframe for end. Set end to 0% here and then go about five frames ahead of the last keyframe we made for start and set end to 100%. What this will do is create this somewhat semi-circle animation. Let's make sure our keyframes are easy eased. I'm going to set the end caps of this path to round to kind of round off the corners. Now let's duplicate this first circle shape layer. Then I'm going to press R on my keyboard and change the rotation of the duplicated layer. I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. However, you can really rotate this however you'd like to achieve the effect you're going for. I'm going to duplicate this layer again, press S on my keyboard to scale it down a little bit. And then I'm just going to adjust the stroke width of the circle to be a little bit smaller. And by pressing U on my keyboard, I can see all my keyframes on this specific layer. And I'm just going to adjust the timing a little to offset from the other circles and space these keyframes a bit further out. I'm going to duplicate the layer one more time and make some more adjustments. Again, you can really do whatever you want here. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. You can make it your own. All right, so now we have this circle animation. And just for simplicity, I'm going to select all of these shape layers and pre-compose them and name it circle animation. Make sure you leave move all attributes into the new composition selected. Then for the logo, I'm just going to make a new composition, make it 500 by 500 and just call it logo. So I have my imported logo here. And since it's not in the shape of a circle, I'm just going to draw a quick white circle to fill this composition. Then I'm going to drop my logo on top of it and resize to fit to the desired look. All right, once we have our logo built, let's head over back to the intro composition. Then I'm going to just drag my logo comp to this timeline. Then I'm going to use scale to resize to an appropriate size to fit in our circle animation. You might remember that there was this liquid fill animation for our logo. And for that, we're going to use masks. I'm going to place my playhead where I want my animation to end on the timeline and then draw a liquid type mask on our logo layer with the pen tool. This doesn't have to be a perfect mask. The most important part is to add a smooth wave here on top so it feels like liquid. Once that's finished, I'm just going to move this mask above the logo so that when it ends, the whole logo will be revealed. Now click on the stopwatch next to mask path so that when we change the mask, it'll remember the movement. I'm going to go back a few frames and move the mask points down all the way below the logo and change the way the curve looks a little. So now once I play it back, you'll see that it's looking okay. It's not quite what we're wanting. Let's go about halfway between these two mask keyframes and adjust the mask path again and make it so that the wave is kind of inverted. That gives it the flow feel and tricks us into thinking that there's liquid moving around. All right, now I'm going to select these keyframes and right click them and make them easy ease. You can also do this by just pressing F9 on your keyboard. So from now on, I'm just going to be using F9. Now let's open up the graph editor and make some adjustments here. I'm just going to change the curves here so it starts a little bit faster and then slows down. I'm also going to raise both of these keyframes here so that the liquid animation plays back smooth between the two keyframes instead of having this weird pause here. All right, once you're done tweaking the keyframes in the graph editor, let's exit that and preview our animation. I really like the way it looks. Just to add a little bit of movement to my logo, I'm going to go to my first mask keyframe and pressing S on my keyboard, open the scale property for the logo. Here I'm going to set a keyframe and then just going to go ahead and advance forward to the point where I want my intro to start animating out and set another keyframe. Then just bring up the scale a little bit. Then just easy ease the keyframes. This will just make the logo slowly grow once it's animated in. All right, then at that last scale keyframe, I'm going to advance forward just a little bit and set the scale of my logo to zero. Then I'm going to create rotation keyframes in both of those last two scale keyframes and set the rotation to minus 180 on the last keyframe. And then of course, don't forget to easy ease those keyframes. 
Then when I play it back, you'll see that we have a cool little transition out of our logo here. Now to spice up this whole thing, I'm going to add some glow effects. Just search glow in the effects and presets window and drag this effect onto your logo. I'm just gonna tweak some settings here until it looks how I want, and these will most likely change depending on your logo style. I'm also gonna set the color to blue to match my logo. Then once I'm happy with this look, I'm just going to copy this effect to my circle animation layer just to add a little bit more glow. Now let's just add some stuff to the background. Go ahead and make a solid layer. It doesn't matter what color it is. I'm just going to name mine BG for background. Then let's search for the gradient ramp effect in the effects and presets window and drag it onto that solid. I'm just gonna set it to radial ramp increase the ramp scatter, and set the point of the ramp to the middle of my composition. Then you just need to tweak the colors to work for your color palette. For me, I'm just gonna do dark blue as the start color and black as the end color. This just adds a slight gradient, so it's not just solid black behind our animation. Then let's create another solid. I'm just going to name this solid particles and set it to a darkish blue. Then search in effects and presets for CC ball action. Just drag that onto the solid. Then I'm going to tweak the settings in here till I get what I'm looking for. Adjust scatter, ball size, and grid spacing to achieve your desired look. Then to make them move, just hold down Option or Alt on your keyboard and press this stopwatch next to Instability State. This will create a place for you to enter an expression. Just head down to your timeline and open up the expression and type in time multiplied by five. The higher the number here, the faster they'll move. I'm gonna throw a quick Gaussian blur onto these circles just to kind of smooth them out into the background. All right, and now we have a very nice looking intro. Really quickly, I'm just going to add these circle sprites just to add some more detail in. I'm going to go a few seconds before my logo spins out, create a new circle while holding shift and setting these stroke settings. Then just center up your anchor point, again, holding control or command and clicking on the anchor point tool will center it. Then I'm just going to animate it to just grow using the scale property and keyframing. Then towards the end of your scale animation, just create a keyframe under the stroke width property and then go to the end of your scale animation and just set the stroke width to zero. When I play it back, you'll see this cool little circle sprite effect. Now I'm just gonna press Control or Command D on my keyboard to duplicate the layer and move them around my composition randomly. I'll put around 20 to 30 of them here just to add some detail, moving them around each time. Then you can even go down to your timeline and offset them to randomize it even further. Then just pre-compose those circle sprites to clean things up. And now when I play back the intro, you'll see that we have a super clean and simple yet fun intro that you created. And that's all. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, please remember to leave a like. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss more videos like this. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And until next time, guys, peace out.